Hi, welcome to A Watchman's Journal. I'm Diana Larkin. Today, we are going to bring you a prophetic dream about DJT and the general. Our dreamer has kindly in, uh, said that she would come on with us, uh, just having some technical difficulties. So we're only going to be able to hear her voice, but it's going to make it very mysterious, like we're protecting her identity. So enjoy that. <laughs> Joining me today are John Redenbow of Dream Life Decoded. Hi, John. Hey, how you doing, Diana? Good to be doing here. Doing great. You. Good. It's so good to be with you too, John. And thank you, everybody um, in this room here for your patience as we tried to iron out some wrinkles. And <laughs> Ash West from the UK, our prophetic dreamer, part of a Watchman's Journal staff. Welcome, Ash. Hi, Diana. Lovely to be with you. I'm really looking forward to uh, hearing this dream. <clears throat> yes, indeed. And Victoria Usher, we would like to welcome you so much to the show and thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Diana. It's a real pleasure to be here. Um, you asked me to say a little bit about myself. I, I did. Was born and raised, <laughs> yes, I was born and raised in Seattle, Washington, and um, I, uh, we moved to uh, Sa um, Santa Maria, California when I was four, uh, 11 years old. And I didn't know the Lord at the time. My mom was um, a Christian in our family. And um, so uh, I went to church there and uh, that was when I became saved. And um, we lived in Santa Maria for four years and came back to Seattle. And I um, finished my schooling and I became a nurse in 1973. I worked at a lot of jobs. I was a, um, uh, an OR nurse and I taught uh, LVN students. Um, I worked in the hospital and worked in hospice and um, took care of children on ventilators. And then in 1985, I decided I wanted to be in the Air Force. And so I, I went into um, the Air Force Reserve and I flew in the C-141 on the medevac missions. Um, oh. People fr from um, Hawaii and Guam uh, and took them into the United States bases that were people that were really ill um, of the servicemen. And um, then uh, I, we came back to, uh, uh, well, I got married. And so I've been living here in San Diego for um, about 30 years with my husband, Harold. And we have no children. And um, just in, uh, let's see, I think it was the first part of 2022, I'd never had the Holy Spirit at all, and so my sister did, and she she prayed for me that I would receive the Holy Spirit, and I did, and um, I have been doing dreams, but um, I never really remembered them until I got this one dream about DJT, and that was on July uh, 21st, 2022, and um I don't know. Would you like me to to, to read yes, that dream? Yes, please dive right in and tell us about the stream. Thank you for a little bit of your story. That is uh, precious. And thank you for your service. Uh, oh, that's okay. uh, invaluable, just helping uh, our wounded um, get to places of treatment. That's awesome. So what, it, what I wanted people to know that too, because it gives you some background in this dream because you understand military protocol and and that's really important uh for this dream so go ahead and dive in and tell us this dream okay um it it happened as i said on july 21st 2022 and um when i had the dream i knew it was djt and that, that he was the president even though he was not the president now, is not the president now. And um, the first scene was that uh, President GJT was in a clear white metallic plane. It wasn't like anything I had seen before. 
I knew he had stopped the enemy from an air invasion of the United States. He was in a plane that no one knew he was in. The enemy was very, very angry about this. Then um, I had the next scene. Uh, I was in the military and I was in a, a place. Uh, it was in a White House, I believe, where a, a general, general was having a, a meeting and I didn't know the general or the people, I, there were people there. <clears throat> this general uh, wanted to speak to President Trump downstairs where we were at. And um, so I was told to go upstairs and get the president to come down to, to uh, the meeting. <clears throat> I knew in my spirit that the general wanted to, to um, he wanted uh, DJT dead. So uh, now as I was going up the stairs to uh, DJT's office, President DJT was coming downstairs and there were some men with him. Uh, and so as I met, as we met, I put one finger to my lips, meaning don't speak. And the other finger, I slid across my throat and then pointed downstairs, yes, right. And then um, the president, he didn't say anything as I pointed downstairs. Um, I also, um, let's see, I mouthed the words, he wants to kill you. So I didn't say anything, there was no voice, but I just mouthed it. Um, let's see. And then uh, with wide eyes open and doing the finger over my throat again, I pointed to a wire. And this was to show him that the general could hear what was being said. Uh, then I said, <clears throat> excuse me, Mr. President, are you able to meet General so-and-so downstairs for a few minutes? I showed him the wire. He said, no, not right now. Okay, I said, and I left. Then um, the last scene is uh, the president's car is going on the Capitol grounds when another unknown car is coming, but it was tipped over by an angel or the military. I don't know which, and I, I'm not sure. But I do know that the president, DJT, was okay, and the general and the bad guys in the other car were arrested and taken away. And then my dream ended. Wow. That's quite an adventure uh, that you dreamed, <laughs> Victoria. <laughs> it's great. Yes. Do you, uh, Ash, John, do you have any questions you need to ask? Um, when you said the car was tipped over, that wasn't the presidential limo, the beast, but it was the other car, right? It was, yes, it was the general's and the, the bad man's car. Okay, do you, do you have any description of that car at all? No, no, okay. no I just, um, it, I don't know if it was, what the color was. I just saw that it was a, a big vehicle, could have been an SUV or whatever, uh, and it was just pushed over. But I didn't see anybody in th that car. But I had the sense that it was that General So and So, <laughs> whoever he was, and the the men that wanted to, to kill the president. Do you know who the general was? I did ask her if she no, saw a face. I never saw the general. Because <laughs> I was going to have her go look at all the generals that served with <laughs> with DJT and were in the next <laughs> administration, but. She said no, and that and that's probably to protect her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have I any did, other questions. This morning, this morning, I did have the impression. Uh, this morning, I had the impression from the Holy Spirit that uh, I wasn't a captain, but I was um, a higher rank. I don't know if it was um, a colonel. Um, because I don't think uh, I would be able to be a captain with such a 
you know, important information. Uh, um, but um, yeah, it was very interesting. Um, and mostly what I told you is pretty much what happened. Well, I think that's interesting. You were um, uh, different. You weren't a captain in the Air Force. You were a higher grade. And to me, that says you're due for a promotion in the kingdom. So I think that's really, that's <laughs> just, a, that's a cool side note here. <laughs> John, Ash, jump in anytime that's you want. That's kind of nice. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, Ash. Um, yeah, there was a question I had, Victoria. In regards to um, the flying in a clear white metallic plane, um, you said it was like something that you've never seen before. Can I ask, is that due to the, the clearness, uh, the, the color, or is that due to the design of the plane? Is it you know, something that we could relate as a, an identified flying object, or is it a new design of aircraft, air force? I mean, could you just give us a little bit more detail in that? I, I believe, um, I got a slight impression that it might be a new type of plane, but that didn't stay with me very long. It, it was that um, he that he was uh, protecting the country, and nobody knew knew that he was doing that. But yeah. but I didn't see partic a particular plane or or shape or anything like that. Okay. okay. So that, yeah, that makes sense to me because that could mean that he's up. That means that he's, he's still leading in some capacity that we don't really see out in the open and don't know, but he, he is saving us from the enemy. So I think that's good news. Um, yes, that sounds Yes, because I got—I literally got stealth bomber. Oh, so the stealth bombers when they—they've got a very peculiar design, obviously for aerodynamics, but also with the technology that they have on board to, you know, to hide themselves from, you know, radar and other uh, detectable uh, warning systems of enemy, you know, combatants. So, to me, that that speaks to the administration, shall we say, that he's currently flying. That is stealth, but is high above what the enemy on the ground is currently doing, plotting, planning, and scheming. Um, so, and also when you're higher above, when you have the higher ground, quite easily, it's easier to read the land. So you then find a, in you, you checkpoint or you, you know, you, you, you dot down on the map where the advantage points are in your location. So you have that that forty thousand square foot use, but so to speak, he has that advantage over the enemy. But the Lord, I feel that the Lord's telling you and showing you here that where he's positioned, not only is he higher, not only does he have the read of the ground, but also that his administration, what he's delivering, what he's traveling, what he's driving or flying through to deliver right now. Is something that the people on the ground can't really see and understand because it's stealth at this time, but it's going to be seen. And he still needs to rely on the intel that you and other people like you are handing over to him. It's really, really interesting to me. John, what do you see in that first scene there? Um, <clears throat> I took a few notes. I heard the same thing about stealth. When you said clear, white metallic plane, um, so I heard that same thing that Ash did about stealth, almost something that's invisible or at least invisible to radar or whatever. Um, I think it's interesting that he stopped the invasion um, and no one knew that he was in the plane. Um, so, so this talks about unseen warfare, right? something that's clear, so that's transparent, somebody that nobody knew, um, wasn't what anybody expected. And apparently what happened is in a covert war, the enemy was outmaneuvered. 
it doesn't say that that's why they won, but there's the assumption that there was something that uh, was hidden or covert in a sense that they couldn't detect and then therefore they couldn't see. It was the play that they didn't see coming. Yeah, that's good. All right, let's move on to scene two. So she's in the White House with the generals meeting. Very interesting. Yeah, this is interesting. I was actually pulling up the floor plan of the White House just because there's been multiple dreams that people have had about being inside the White House or actually sleeping in Lincoln bedroom and and waking up. And of course, we know that Lincoln was the most at least known prolific presidential dreamer. And so he had dreams in his own bedroom in the White House. And so it's always fascinated me like, well, where is that in relation to the grand staircase? Or are they on level three or level one, you know? And so I think it's really interesting that there is a staircase here that she's going upstairs to, excuse me, to find uh, the president <laughs> and meet with him. And so I think that that's really interesting. Obviously, um, if you're anything like me, we all want to know, well, who, who's the who's the general? What's the identity of the general? Um, it doesn't look like that that is spelled out here very clearly, if at all. I don't know that there's any tells in the dream that could tell us the identity of the general. So it might be something that <clears throat> sometimes when God does that, he does that for a particular reason to protect people, to keep information or intelligence uh, secret. But then it's like, well, why is he telling us this? if he's not revealing the identity and we've found information, particularly presidential information that we would never share in a public show anyway, because it was sensitive. Um, and so I think it's interesting and it's certainly one to watch. We've had multiple other dreams that we've seen with generals. In fact, one is known as the general's dream. And so I think it's really interesting that God is speaking to you about Obviously, a general that was in proximity, possibly in the administration, uh, close by, you know, I mean, it's fruitless for us to guess as to who we think it would be, um, but to just kind of hear and discern from the Lord what is being said and what is happening. I also think it's really, there's a really interesting juxtaposition between the first scene and the second scene. The first scene is unseen warfare. The second scene is unheard warfare. Wow. So, you know, she does the shh and then the, mm -hmm. you know, you know, that kind of a thing. And so it's, it's what's seen, but it's not heard. So the first is not seen, but possibly heard. And the second is seen, but not heard. And so I think it's two different, well, and, and it's interesting because you're going up the stairs. So I was going to say it's two different levels of warfare. Well, it's actually on two different floors too, because you're going up the stairs to let the president know you need to go meet with the general. And so there's a lot in here about, um, well, both the seer realm and the audible realm. I always see prophecy as kind of the audible realm because if you've ever listened to a prophetic um a dreamer that is like a known prophet a lot of times in their interpretation they feel like the most important part was what they heard like and then the general walked up and said and then they key in on that but well what about the fact that this was in the white house this was on the stairs this was the general was in the other room you know you were sent it so there's all of these symbols that add a level of kind of play, if you will, to the language that God is using in this. And all of it is important, including, Victoria, your promotion. Yeah. <laughs> so how do you feel about all, the, all that we've said so far? Well, it's, it's very interesting. And um, I, I think... Um, uh, I think the president um, 
I when I thought about the, the metal chain, uh, I thought about protection too. And you see, uh, uh, President uh, people all the time, you know, protecting him. Um, but uh, I feel too that there has been. Um, I think I've heard several prophets say that, that you know he's still um, in danger because of uh, what's happening with all the courts court situations and things like that, you know, in the election. And so we still need to uh, bring quite a bit. Um, uh, it's interesting that I, I, was, I was just really, uh, go ahead. It's interesting that you mentioned the court stuff, because I think that comes to play in this stream. The first attack takes place on White House grounds or the intention of an attack, which is then averted. But the second is on Capitol grounds. And so I'm like, is this January 6th related? Is there a general that was behind the plot of what happened there, the alleged insurrection? And of course, Trump is still fighting those legal battles where they're, they're trying to go after him, even though we know that it wasn't violent. We know that it wasn't an insurrection. Nobody was charged with any of these things that the media has consistently tried to pour down the gullet of the uneducated American um, consumer of media. But <clears throat> um, it wasn't that case at all. It was a family day where a bunch of people showed up to support their choice for president and to hear what he had to say about the election. And, um, you know, kids were there and family there were a lot of people waving flags, people dressed up as Benjamin Franklin or Abraham Lincoln or George Washington. I mean, it was like a patriotic festival versus anything even close to what the, 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 the media said. And there were probably a million to two million people that were there. You know, it wasn't like just these 50,000 or just these. Yeah. You know, five or 10 people that were up by the door or that walked through the Capitol or, or whatever. Like it was clearly not. They tried to take something that was um, really a beautiful expression of support and patriotism and wanting to understand the importance of election integrity without being censored and without the media's take. And they wanted to hear straight from Donald J. Trump. Um, and and the media, it was clear that they had plans to with whoever was behind it to pervert it and make it into something that it wasn't at all. Um, and so I think it's been used and is continuing to be used. And I think they did it for a reason. Uh, to me, it reminds me of the Russia collusion thing. It's like they're not very creative. They do these things once every like four years and then they pull it out as a billy club during election year. And, and you know. Three and a half years, the media railed on falsely, probably knowingly falsely at, at some point about Russia collusion, never came out and, and really apologized or backed up their position or anything. They just moved on and started talking about the next fake news story, which, again, tells you about everything you need to know about the media. But in particular, that this was a car and it was the beast. It was a car that was coming, driving towards or in the same area as the presidential limo. Um, what was it actually the presidential limo? Did you see, was it the beast that the president drives in or was it, um, a different car? Like you said, the plane was probably different. Um, I got the impression that it was just a long, a long car, a car uh, and there were people. That's all the impression that I got. Okay, you're clear now, but everything else we didn't um, use. You got the impression I, that it was the presidential limo or another car? <clears throat> I got the impression that it was a large car, a large limousine that was black. And um I don't know if it was if if it was the presidential limo. Okay. Um or if they were trying to the trying to get, uh, if they had plans to do something, you know, to get these, because I told him about the, the general, you know, and if he was doing something to try to get them out, you know, to make them come out and so he could um, see who it was. I don't know. 
I think it's interesting that she used sign language to communicate with him um, because she knew she was being listened to. So it kind of speaks of a whistleblower that, um, I don't know, what do you think that sign language would would say? Well, I think it's super interesting because there's a double entendre even in the sign language. Um, the sign language... Uh, first of all, she's using sign because the wire is corrupted, because we know that somebody is listening on the wire. But it's interesting because she holds one finger up like this, and then the other finger and does this. You know, um, what's what's fascinating is, is there's a dream that a, a Hollywood person had that we analyzed where um, – Donald Trump was about to do surgery and he was supposed to have an attending physician and the physician wasn't there. And they knew the physician was the one to guide him through the surgery. And this, this lady just happened. She's like, Oh my gosh, well, you're not going to continue without the physician. Are you? Because they knew, I mean, clearly he's an amateur surgeon, you know, and he's like, we have to, to save this body. And it was clear that the body was like the United States. And when he goes to operate, she looks down at his finger and his pointer finger had gangrene on it. And she said, Mr. President, your finger. And without hesitating for a second, he took the scalpel and whacked off the tip end of his finger and then continued the surgery. What's really fascinating is the the uh, the, the, the company that this lady worked for in Hollywood was the same company that, <clears throat> that did the movies, The Hobbit. And if you remember in Lord of the Rings, Sauron wore the ring of power on his right index finger, and it was hacked off in the battle with the ring on it. But Frodo, when he went to put it in the in the fires of Mount Doom, it was on his left index finger. So both of the times it was on, an, and, and he had it, of course, Gollum bit off his finger, and the, the ring was on the finger. So the idea of whacking off the top of, of, of a finger. So the, if, if you look in, and we looked into the whole importance of the pointer finger and what it means, even to the point of what it says in scripture about the pointing finger and the malicious talk. And, but the Bible specifically talks about pointing finger and malicious talk. And she's using her pointer finger to stop the talk that could end badly. It's clearly malicious talk malicious the idea that we want to kill somebody but but the talk but it also reminds me of we think of let's just say other inhabitants maybe friends or wives of people that were in the white house before who many of us believe to know that they have silenced people that have come against them um, on an ongoing basis because of what's been said or because of things that have come out or because they were on a witness list or whatever and so there's She's using that nonverbal communication, knowing she's being listened to, to be able to communicate line of sight only to the president what's happening, you know, so the president can respond accordingly. And can you meet with the general? No, not right now. You know, and then the next scene, they're in the car and they're they're moving away from that situation. Yep, that's good. Ash, Ash, what do you think? Yeah. <laughs> Ash, my brother. <laughs> um, it's interesting because I I mean I got dibs on this stream the same time as you did, Diana. So I already kind of pressed ahead and did what the you know shared what the Lord uh, gave me. So on this scene too, I'm just gonna uh, read a little bit that I got here. Um so I got this as well. So it's interesting what John's just picked up on in regards to the choir, because what you speak of can cause this. But I also got this, and again, relates to the, I suppose, the first half of the dream of the, the shadow operations or government or the ruling and authority that he's had. And I got that where he trusts and loves the people, especially the veterans, he's very vocal about this. Um, more than the military complex that is in the current, shall we say, administration, uh, babysitting the chair at the moment in the house. Um, he trusts and loves them more. And But this is what really stood out to me, is I wrote this, you also represent the people. 
I also get a feeling somehow he monitors the response you give him, and that speaks to what he does when he talks or posts about someone or something everyone knows is not good. He willingly becomes the target, so the enemy comes out of hiding and exposes themselves, and the people identify said enemy, then point it out to give the signal to Trump that they now see who that person is, or they're confirming that the person that Trump is pointing out should be like, you need to look into this guy more. So there's a signal that goes both ways here. Um, if you really look at what um, DJT posts, and there are some characters in the past that you thought, why is he doing that? We know this person or this person or this situation is not a good thing. But yet he's doing it because he wants the confirmation to understand that you guys, we the people, understand. But now you're doing this to him. So you're giving him like, Mr. President, you need to go and see the general. And he's like, are you available? And you're like, are you available to go and see? And he's like, no, not right now. Meaning I see, I understand what you're telling me. So I think this really does revert back to his social media posts. The way that he communicates, leaves the little drops of information, wants the nod, the, the wink, so to speak, the confirmation, the five fives. And then once that's received, then everybody knows they're on the same playing field. And again, like John pointed out, you going up to meet him, him coming down from a, a higher position, and you're meeting at the same level to communicate with each other. I feel this is an element of this that represents that. How does hmm. that make sense? Yeah, that's good. Well, there's a couple other warfare pieces in here. Okay. First of all, the win, <laughs> right? Let's celebrate the win. He stopped the invasion. He did. The enemy was ticked. Nobody knew he was on the plane. It was unseen warfare and his hand was unseen. There's a, you know, a lot of people that, that did not know, like anybody didn't know that he was the one that stopped the invasion. And obviously a stopped invasion never gets any press. Hmm. You know, if it bleeds, it leads. They only put out there yeah. the bad stuff that happens. And so yeah. the good stuff that happens, like I, I don't hear, I haven't heard cnn or even fox news do a special on the fact that there were no wars during trump's administration for no. some reason i don't know why <laughs> but you know they should get don lemon or somebody to get on there and host you know the warfare free president you know the peace um the peace tour of donald j trump or something i, I don't know why they didn't um, um but it would kind of be like Haman, yeah. Haman <laughs> having to lead mordecai around on the horse I, right. I'd go for it. Yeah. <laughs> well, the other thing that's interesting is, um, and this is a question for, well, I have a question for Victoria, but um, ah, we just lost her. Just lost her. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> but my question would be, and, and maybe you guys can, maybe you guys heard it. I didn't. Um, how did she know the general wanted the president dead? Did she hear that or did she discern that? She discerned it. That's what I felt. And yes. that, my friends, is spiritual intelligence. Mm -hmm. Spiritual intelligence. Yes, it's dreams. And there's a lot. Of, here we are talking about a dream, but where God is illustrating in a dream what we've seen as a vision for spiritual intelligence. And even when different things happen where there was a revolving door where, the, you know, President Trump brings in a new, you know, somebody on the National Security Council or something, mm -hmm. and then they're fired, you know, short, or they leave or they resign shortly after this or that. It's like, who around him has the discernment to say, take this meeting, don't take this meeting. Mm. Go talk to these guys, don't talk to these guys. Yeah. You know? And so the level of discernment that she is showing is something that we've seen particularly a need for at a presidential level because it's so hard. Mm. So, you know, you look at a general, I was in the military, you look at a general and you think, well, these guys love the country, they're patriots, they care about the American people. And we never, especially those of us who, who are pure, we don't think of this guy could be bought, this guy could have a bad agenda, this guy could want harm to our leaders like the president. 
and beyond. And so even the dream itself clearly illustrates the idea of what it would be like to have advisors. And again, I know that there was a team of people, nothing against the team of people that advised him on faith matters. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about a pastor or pastors or a group of people that go out, you know, once or twice a month and meet and pray. And those are vital functions in an administration. I am talking about a full-time intelligence capability, just like when the Central Intelligence Agency puts the president's daily brief on the president's desk and briefs him every morning, he should have a group of people full-time around him that can discern from the Holy Spirit things like threats to his life and his family and his well-being or policy decisions that could be made. And, and again, and it's not just sensing and hearing, it's also being able to interpret the data that the president is given that he doesn't, may not have the bandwidth to be able to decode such as dreams. And again, we see this in scripture, um, but it's something that I'd love to see in the modern era. It's very interesting to me that Joseph and Daniel both, when they answered one question the king had, suddenly they're an integral part of the administration forever. For Daniel, it was for the next three or four or five kings and administrations yeah. beyond. Like they're so cemented in as part of the national security infrastructure in the superpowers biblically, which was obviously the Babylonian Empire and Egypt, because the king sees the value that, man, if this guy can just interpret a dream and see that, I need to have people around me. And so that's what she was seeing. She was seeing a crystal clear example of a mortal threat to the president's life by an insider, by a trusted member of the military. He wouldn't be in the White House if he wasn't a trusted member of the military and very likely a trusted member of the president's inner circle, or he wouldn't even be requesting a meeting. And so it's that close, and she's able to see it and detect it, and then also to know that the system of communication has been compromised, that they're listening to everything we're saying. I think it's also interesting that she thought or she knew that the wire, that the general has access to the wire so he can hear what we say, but apparently he didn't have access to the camera, so he couldn't see her, you know, do this. So I think that's that's interesting that there's a level of spiritual warfare that the bad side in this in the natural, the people that want the destruction of the nation, the destruction of the country, the destruction of somebody that would be a president or was a president of the United States, that there's a different level that that the president plays on and the people that are around him. That's why, again, going up the stairs and, of course, going up the stairs to talk to DJT and to, to non-verbally signal to him reminds me very much of the ladder, the second dream in the Bible, Jacob's ladder, which is the angels ascending and descending. And I think it's just it's it's interesting because the and if you if you look at a lot of what the angelic mandate is, particularly for someone in that position, it's secret service, it's guardian, it's protector, it's, you know, Yes, there's wisdom and there's things that are happening, but a lot of what the angelic does, particularly around someone that's the president of the United States or the leader of a nation, is to protect them. And so that's what's happening in the unseen level. Now, again, DJT just won a battle in the unseen level, in the airways. So it's talking about first heaven, second heaven. It's talking about ground warfare. What's happening on the ground level, in the ground there, in the natural, there's a group of people that want to take this guy out. But in the spiritual, they're probably upset that they just got their behinds kicked because they didn't know this secret capability that DJT had, which was this invisible, clear plane, metallic plane, and that the stealth technology, which is, again, it, we would see that as very, very much affecting wars and outcomes, even strategically, as we see all through scripture, is the idea of the angelic and spiritual warfare. So you can see the imprints of the angelic on this dream, but you can also see the very real natural kind of national security infrastructure, chain of command, trusted internal general with access 
who one person with a level of discernment is able to say, nope, you're not, yeah, I'll go get them. But then she even knows to deceive, you know, to do a feint of the enemy, to deceive the enemy and say, oh yeah, I'll be the one to go get him. When actually I'm going to be the one to go and tell him he is not to meet with you, though what you're going to hear is I'm advocating on your behalf. So not mm -hmm. only does she have discernment of the situation and the intentions of the internal enemy, which is is uh, what you would call, uh, you know, the, obviously a turncoat. This guy to have access to be a military general and to wish harm on the president of the United States. This is a guy that's a double agent. She immediately becomes a double agent herself. Nobody has to tell her. Nobody has to pull her aside. She discerns the bad intentions and then like, oh, pick me. I'll be the one to go get him. And then she goes to get him and then delivers not once, but twice. She delivers false information to the enemy. She tells him, I'll go get the president with no intention of seeing that meeting actually happen. And then when she goes up the stairs to meet with the president, she gives the president one set of signals. But because she knows the general is listening, she says something else. So the general is still convinced, not once, but by, by two pieces of communication in person looking at her and then over the wire that she has done what she said and she is a trusted member of our side acting on my behalf as an agent to bring about the destruction that I want. When in, in reality, she's discerned, she's become herself a double agent and she gives the president the information that keeps his life did you know you were going to grow up to be a double agent, Victoria? <laughs> no, I didn't. Uh, but I, I had uh, one thing that I wanted to say. It was very interesting, John, what you said, especially when you put your finger to your uh, mouth and you uh, cross your, your throat. To me, Diana did the same thing. It showed the cross. You know, yeah. your finger there and, and oh my gosh, and the cross. Wow, and and also, um, uh, w when I was um, in with the general, um, I felt more that it was God that made it. When I heard when I heard he was saying that it was more God that chose had him choose me than me say that I was going to, I would do it. You know, it was God working in the situation and he he selected me and and I was glad he did because being a Christian, I wanted to, to help the president, you know. And then, then the Lord, I think, gave me what I needed to do in that time period. Um, and that's kind of, um, but when I saw that, what, what you did with the, the fingers, it just, the, the cross stood out to me. That's very cool. Yeah. Well, let's hit the last scene just uh, briefly here. What hits me in this one is that the bad guy's car got tipped over. And that t speaks to me of the tables being turned. It, you know, that uh, you just get flipped on uh, what you thought you were going to do. And I love that. And that you didn't know if it was an angel or the military. And I kind of think it was probably a combination because I think this is a joint effort between heaven and earth and that God is using the military and his military to work together because that's really how it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Ash, you haven't said anything for a while. What about that last scene that popped out to you? You know, it's, it's interesting because it's, to me, it's a quite clear um, uh, continuation of what the previous scene was uh, we've just gone through. So she's given a tip, an right. intel. Um, okay, go, over here. For um, and literally, which is called, that intel has caused <laughs> the tipping of the enemy's vehicle, their, their vehicle, a choice of attack or their, their method, the way that they're going to choose. Um, it, it's, it's caused this cap, uh, capsizing of it, um, it's thwarted. I agree with Diana, it's both spiritually and physically uh, that this will be done. It's quite clearly it is because you're gaining the spiritual intel, just like John's just gone over here. 
uh, and has explained you're receiving that you're then handing that over to you know either directly or indirectly to the people that it needs to go to this message is then deciphered and enacted upon accordingly um, so it really does wrap um, you know it doesn't say that there's not going to be an attack that the enemy's going to give oh all right there's no way we can you know get around this you know, the Philistine didn't um, the enemy didn't do the same uh, in regards to finding out there was a prophet Elijah what did they do they increased their forces on the actual prophet instead of the king um, so again there's there's a message in that to all of us with this responsibility with these blessings this anointing with an increase of receiving what the Lord has there's also an increase of the enemy's fear itself and they have to act on this so um, you have that also just referring back to the last scene as well we have to remind ourselves exactly what john was just going over here david did the same thing king david did exactly the same thing behind the enemy line where he was just like yes um you know i'll serve you i'll go and raid the camp uh, over in israel i'll go and take it still where in fact what he was doing is he was getting the orders from the enemy he was going and taking out the enemy's homeland instead and then coming back with a good report for them saying oh yes we plundered the israelites we took this and we brought here here's your tribute this is what's going on and this is how deluded um how prideful uh and how selfish and just warped the enemy and his children are um and again i mean we can go back step by step by step here because they are, in your dream, there's steps here to information warfare, intelligence, and a structure, a method, a system here of going down the chain and up the chain of command. Um, you know, I, I saw the same thing with you when John did the cross. I was like, that's a cross. <laughs> and then you picked up on this. Um, so to me, the Lord's even speaking to you directly in the stream saying, I'm speaking to you in a language that me and you understand. And the forerunner of this, or the full focus of this, is in imagery. It's not in audio, like we, we have with some other people, you know, like Diana. Um, it's more audio. It's more a, a verbal. Whereas with, with someone like myself and, and you, it looks like it's more visual here. Or you could be like Diana, that she gets the mixture of both worlds. Um, but for myself and, and people like John, uh, and others really get more of the imagery here. This is the Lord speaking to you, kind of training you in these dreams, saying, this is confirmation of how I'm going to speak to you in this season. So I'm really excited for you, Victoria. <laughs> and John, what's your insights for us now on this Free last win. scene? Big Free win. Victories. The first yes. scene is yes. coming back from a victory in the air. The second victory was um, in the White House, and the third was Capitol Grounds. Um, <clears throat> two plots exposed. Um, the, the, the plot of the turncoat general inside the White House, um, the plot of something related to the Capitol Grounds. No idea what that could be. But... <laughs> <laughs> but uh, um, <laughs> and then the idea of second level yeah. warfare all of them so the first one again was the planes in the air second level warfare the second one was on the stairs indicative of even the angelic working like jacob's ladder but also the messenger also the turn code also you know it's just fascinating how god gives counterintelligence in dreams it, it it takes most people a while to wrap their head around even the idea of actionable intelligence or intelligence in dreams. But counterintelligence is the, is the story of Gideon, you know, where God is giving dreams to the enemy. I ran across, I've only found it in one place, but I ran across a book, um, I was reading a book about World War II, and they said that Hitler had yellow fever for like five days. And while he was like, in and out of consciousness and like, you know, whatever he, he had a dream. I think he was on his couch at the time. He had a dream about the Arden offensive. And so when he got better, he came to his generals and said, this is what we're going to do. We're going to cut into the Arden and we're going to split the allied forces in half. And they all looked at him like, 
you got to be out of your mind. This will be the end of us. And of course, so famously, the Ardennes Offensive, as it's called, but it also turned into what became known as the Battle of the Bulge, because as they tried to cut off the military forces, they only got so far in, which created this bulge. They overextended themselves, and that was the 100% turning point of the end of the Nazi army. Because from that point on, we pushed all the way to Berlin from that point. So wouldn't it be just like God to give a guy a dream so he thinks it's his idea to come up with an offensive that he thinks is going to be the undoing of the enemy and the winning of his own side, and it actually leads to the demise. Um, and, and so I think that that's interesting. And, and we talk a lot about you know what God is doing with us and how God is telling us things, but God is working on behalf, you know, Jehovah sneaky as some people like to call them. I mean, it takes on a whole different level when you're talking about double agents and counterintelligence, but it's the idea that God is, is, you know, you talk about 5d chess, God is playing like 55 D chess, you know? <laughs> so there's things that he's bringing into play, but I, I do want to celebrate the idea that there's three distinct wins in this dream, there's the, the battle that's won at the beginning that the enemies ticked about. There's the plot that is exposed and then diverted and completely, um, you know, don't even the opportunity is taken away in, inside the White House in the second one. And then the third one is the battle. Um, I would call it the battle of the Capitol grounds, which is the car. And it's so interesting how even there's been discussion about there's this allegation that Trump grabbed the steering wheel and tried to turn the car to go towards the Capitol during the whole January 6th thing. And there's been testimony in regards to that. And, you know, it's just but it's so interesting how all of that plays into like if you read some of that testimony, like this is one of the key things that they're talking about in one of those indictments is did the president direct the car to go to the Capitol or did he try to steer the car to the Capitol to be part of the alleged fake insurrection? You know, and what was the plot behind it? Was there really a general or people in our own government or people in our own mm -hmm national security structure or say federal law enforcement or department of justice or congress that actually had a hand in planning what happened on capitol grounds and did they get their whole plan tipped over not just exposed but realizing that a car represents a vehicle to destiny their entire destiny has been overturned yes so, which is really interesting because when we think of being on the wrong side of history is one thing, but when you think of your entire destiny, like the purpose for which God created you and what he wanted you to walk in because the path that you chose was an evil path, that whole thing can be overturned, but particularly the plot and the agenda that they've worked for years to be in a position to try to affect has been overturned. And then again, what happens is almost the side note is the bad guys, including the general, are arrested and carted off to jail. Yeah. So it's exposure, it's intelligence, it's spiritual intelligence, it's the double agent twice thing. It's the exposure of the roots of the enemy that they're listening <laughs> inside the White House, that there's military trusted people, but that there's a second level of warfare that Trump has against the enemy. And then there's the final plot being exposed, which I think God is being really kind of specific on that one. Yeah. Well, Victoria, thank you so much for bringing us this awesome dream. And you know what? I just want to say thank you for your service Diane. to our country. And I want to say thank you for your service in that dream. You were just as much uh, taking part. Thank you. I I should ask um, if that's possible. And that has to do with the date of the dream and why it was in the middle of 2022 and the election. Is that? <clears throat> you Are you asking why you, you think you, the dream came that long ago? You kind of broke up a little bit there yes, on your sound. It was right in. 
you know what dreams often foretell the I was future. just wondering what oh. they often foretell the future for okay. us so that we know how okay, to pray and that we have the assurance there is going to be a happy ending that's really important for us to know uh john oh. did you have anything you wanted to add to that yes uh what was the question why did she have that dream in 2022 yeah. And it's taken this long for it to play out. I think it's really interesting. Um, you know, God does give signs and he buries intelligence in certain symbols. And I think I want to celebrate the good that I think the body of Christ is really waking up to the idea of spiritual intelligence. And though when you're waking up and you're learning things, it can be like fumbling a little bit. Um, but I'm like, man, was there a sign we just had in the heavenlies that formed a cross over our nation? Could that be a timestamp? <laughs> you know, it's interesting that we're talking about this right now today on April 9th. Um, <clears throat> but I also think that there's something there specifically related to the midterms and, and approaching going through the summer and into, um, you know, July 21st of 2022. I think it's really interesting that that what God is saying, what I believe God is saying is he's giving symbols about what, what is happening now and what could happen in the future. That seems probably general to a lot of people, but there's, there's, yeah, there's some things that we're not saying. Um, <clears throat> I do think the date is important. There's, there's a lot of times there's a code even in the dates, even in the numbers of the date, God will imprint a code where we've seen that specifically with what's called an Ottendorf cipher or a book cipher. And again, we, we've had so many things in the Christian realm that have been done kind of poorly in that area where we're attributing value to things that like, oh, well, this means this. Five always means grace. No, five does not. Take your numbers book along with your dream dictionary and throw them away <laughs> and learn how to discern the voice of God because car does not mean ministry <laughs> and five does not mean grace. It can be particularly case sensitive. And so <clears throat> looking at the date, I think there's some things that we can go back to and be like, what was happening in the world at this time? And a lot of times God will even say, well, what happened that day? Be like, it's two years ago. I don't have any, well, we'll go see. And then you go and you look it up and you're like, oh my gosh, this was the day Dana Coverstone had a dream. There was, there was a dream that was out there that was pretty popular and, and something happened and he saw things on a calendar and pointed at it. And we looked up, he hit the can, he hit the calendar three times in June. What if that's June 3rd? What happened June 3rd? What happened June 3rd was of this particular year was when the BLMers went and they they uh, they were picketing in front of the White House and then they lit that church on fire and then they sent out the military and then they called the military back and then Trump was like, what are you doing? Why did you call the military? Like that occurred on that day. So it was a general who Trump had said, send out the military because they're literally burning churches down next to the White House. And this general thought, no, you know what? I don't really like the look of that and the optics aren't great. And I'm just going to go and call the military back. And Trump was like, I didn't tell you to call them back, you know? And so when we go look up dates, what I would say is there's a lot more information contained in this dream than we've uncovered and then and then what we're talking about. And most of you that have seen Diana and Ash and I do programs like this, don't think that this is all there is, because there's a whole team of people that are trained that write what we call dream reports and dossiers, where we go through every single symbol and we do a deep dive until we get to the point that we feel like we've exhausted what God wants to say. Like we've taken a dream like this, a national level dream and had a team of plus 50 plus people spend two months on a dream like that, just so that we know when we end up briefing the people that need to be briefed, that they're getting the information and it's accurate. And so that's why I say we look at 
dreams as intelligence. And if you're going to be an analyst for the CIA, it's a lot different than if you're a dream interpreter in most Christian circles. We're used to the instant feedback and here's kind of a flipping answer and this, and you can see the depth that we go to on this relatively short dream, but we can also see on some of the things that we've uncovered. But what if we spent the next 10 days, you know, eight hours a day, digging into every single piece. I'm telling you, there's so much more that we haven't uncovered, um, including the date, including the locations, including the vehicles, including the buildings, you know, the White House, the Capitol, these are mentioned. There's at least two vehicles that are mentioned. There's multiple pieces of information, the double exposure. And so I just want everybody to know, it's fun to watch this unpack in like 45 minutes. But there's a whole other process that remains unseen when if if we were going to do a dream like this actually for the president of the United States, we would put together a much, believe it or not, a much more detailed briefing. I think we're getting probably 60 to 70 percent of what the dream is saying right now. But there are other nuances that we would be surprised if we looked up things like dates and how far is it from the White House to the Capitol? And do they leave the White House and go straight to the Capitol? And what you put the whole plan. That's why I pulled up as we started talking about this dream. I pulled up a floor plan of the White House and I'm like, OK, where's the residence in relation to the Oval Office and what's in the ground floor and what's on the second level and what's on the third level, because God is speaking through every single part of a dream like this. And we like cannot comprehend in one sitting the level of intelligence that God is giving to people, just unassuming people like Victoria. And we celebrate you that you hear the voice of God and you're hearing that like we, we celebrate and honor the voice of God through you, Victoria, because God is speaking to you very, very high level, national level things. And what we've also found is we've had other dreams where we've gone back into and we've said, okay, God, um, who's the general? And then he tells us. And then we go down that path and then we're like, we can see the things mm -hmm. unfolding it. Oh, well, this happened and this happened. And all of this makes sense. Is there a guy that was in the White House that then was with Trump on the way to the Capitol. I, I don't know. I don't. I don't have. And I don't have all those answers right now because we haven't had time to dig further. But I'm telling you, this is an incredible dream of super high level information that God is sharing with you, Victoria. Which means He trusts you at a high level, and also the idea of the promotion and the military promotion for you. And I think Diana had mentioned this. I, I think there is a role for you to play in the very near future in spiritual intelligence. And that may be with us, that may be in some other advisory capacity, I don't know, but God is showing you first and foremost that you are able to instantaneously discern the nefarious intent of the enemy. And then in a graceful, without having to do a side huddle and figure it out, you're able to convey two messages at once, one message that the general receives as though she did her job and the other message to the president, which actually saved his life. And so that is a calling and a destiny that God is giving you that I want to celebrate with you and any way that we can help or partner with you in that, I, I we'd love to. What do you think of that, Victoria? Thank you for the information. <laughs> I think that was great. Thank you. Um, well. Thank I, you. I appreciate that. It's been really great. Oh, good. I'm glad. I wish we could have seen you too, but I'm really glad that we got to hear your voice and your dream. Uh, they were very powerful, and we so appreciate you coming on and sharing them with us. And John and Ash, thank you so much for joining us again today. Um, and audience, we hope you have been blessed. And uh, we will be back again with more dreams and more dreamers. And uh, we just want to say, God bless you. Thank you for joining us. And just uh, receive his power and grace every day as you seek his face. Bye-bye for now. <laughs>